we're just in the infancy of the hurricane season, right. yeah. so you know, cross our fingers that this this is like, not going to get that bad. We've been talking about how we're just now getting towards the peak of fire season. Right? The yes. Atlantic coast, the Gulf Coast, now just getting towards the peak of hurricane season. It looks Complete like things opposite. are going to be, yeah, ramping up over the next mm. couple of weeks. But it's bad enough there's a storm out there right now. Let's go over to the weather monitor to take a look at the latest satellite imagery of Hurricane Ernesto. It's ingested a little bit of dry air over the past 24 hours or so, so it has weakened very slightly within the past few frames of the satellite loop, but it is going to continue to maintain its current strength, if not get a little bit stronger as it approaches Bermuda over the next couple of days. So here is that track approaching Bermuda as a category two hurricane and then weakening to category one strength, still enough to do a lot of wind damage and result in some coastal erosion and widespread flooding on that island nation as it makes landfall on Saturday, or at least skirts just to the west of the island. And then it heads straight up to the north. It is going to avoid the east coast of the U.S. entirely, heading for the maritime provinces of Canada, still as a category one hurricane by the time Monday afternoon rolls around. So we'll be watching that while our weather is going to be well, the opposite of that. It's going to be very tranquil. Let's take a look and zoom out of the big picture weather pattern here as we head through the next couple of days. Tomorrow we're looking at very few changes to the large scale pattern. The storm systems to our north kind of parade of those. We're going to be in between on Friday, which means pretty much the same weather conditions that we had today. But that next storm system out over the Pacific is going to be kind of digging in. This is going to be closer to the Bay Area by Saturday, not heading directly into our neck of the woods, but close enough to kick in stronger onshore breeze give some cooler temperatures and result in some coastal drizzle while well, most of the moisture with this is going to be aimed towards the Pacific Northwest in the short term. Let's go across the room here and talk about what's happening out there right now. We do have lots of sunshine across the Bay Area right now and a little bit of haze on the horizon, but air quality has been fine. The fires burning in Northern California, specifically the Boise fire in far northwestern California, trying to send a little plume of smoke down towards the North Bay and the East Bay tomorrow. But that storm system moving in from the West is going to be arriving just in time to push that smoke plume away from us as we head into the weekend and early next week. There's that view of just a little bit of haze on the horizon as we look towards Diablo, but otherwise visibilities are fine. Temperatures range from the 60s and 70s around the Bay to mostly 80s inland, registering 70, 93 degrees right now at the Sonoma County Airport. That's kind of the outlier. Downtown Santa Rosa hasn't been as hot. Makes me wonder if maybe that automated sensor is malfunctioning at the Sonoma County Airport. We'll keep an eye on it. We're also going to keep an eye on the fog redeveloping and pretty much doing what it did last night, pushing across the bay into some of the inland valleys by early tomorrow morning. Not going to be a huge intrusion of fog, and it's not going to take too long for it to dissipate and back up towards the coast, and that's the point at which temperatures are going to warm up from another very very normal start. Temperatures mostly in the 50s. The warmest spots around are just above 60 degrees. As usual, the warmest locations in the Delta, but only in the low 60s. Not that much different than the mid to upper 50s that the rest of us are going to have. The very coolest spots in the North Bay Valleys around Petaluma dropping down into the low 50s to begin the day tomorrow. And then temperatures are going to warm up to a couple degrees above average, but certainly not unreasonable for the month of August. Healdsburg up into the mid 90s, just above 90 degrees in Santa Rosa, but into the 90, 80s, excuse me, around Napa and Vallejo with temperatures inland in the East Bay. Some of the hotter spots as well. 91 for Concord, 94 degrees in Fairfield. When 94 is the hot spot on the map in the middle of August, it's really not that hot. Nothing even approaching triple digit heat to comfortable temperatures around the bay back up to 70 in San Francisco with temperatures in the Santa Clara Valley getting up mostly to the low to mid 80s. But the farther inland you go, the more likely temperatures are going to get a little bit farther up into the 80s. Let's talk about the long range outlook. We've been talking about this over the course of the past several days with the warmest temperatures being pushed farther and farther off to our east, but eventually this is the 8 to 14 day out from the Climate Prediction Center, which takes us almost to the end of the month. That warmer signal is going to be making its way closer and closer to the Bay Area. So as we head into early August, it does look like we might be back into a hotter pattern, but not in the short term. The hottest days are going to be in the low to maybe mid 90s inland. I don't think we're going to have any triple digit high temperatures anytime soon, which is great news as we hit the back half of August. Temperatures around the Bay, some minor little ups and downs, some minor changes in how much sunshine you're going to see as that storm system moves through a little more cloud cover and of course a little more drizzle along the coast as well with temperatures staying in the lower half of the 60s right along the coast the foggiest days Saturday and Sunday and then again by Wednesday and Thursday of next week. All right, Paul, thanks.